Good day, grade 12. Sorry that I'm late coming into this party. Unfortunately, I had a bit of a problem with Skype broadcast meeting, so we're just going to start immediately. Go there. And there we go. And we're going to start off with going through the questions that we left off of. In fact, we're not going to start with the questions. We're going to start with the next question. At the moment, what we are doing, grade 12, is we're going through a whole bunch of old exam paper type questions, old exam paper questions on electric circuits. So we're going to be doing a whole bunch of different examples. Um, and then possibly, if we have time, we'll move on to more technical stuff. But I think that this possibly will take us our whole lesson. I'm really sorry for being late. I really struggled to get online today. Okay, so it says consider the circuit below. When switch is, is closed, ammeter A1 reads 5 amps and ammeter A2 reads 3 amps. Okay, now remember this is quite a simple question. This is just really getting you get inside used to the idea of parallel circuits um, and parallel and how they work. Okay, next couple of questions we're going to get into are really nice exam paper questions. Firstly, it says calculate the effective resistance of the combination of the two resistors. So these are parallel resistors. So therefore, you would go 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, which is going to be 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4 you guys are welcome to do this on your calculator. I'm just going to show you how you would do it normally. 6 times 4 is, okay, they're both going to 12. One, 6 goes into 12 2 times. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus 4 goes into 12 3 times. 3 times 1 is 3. So that becomes 5 over 12. But that's 1 over RP. And now you have to be very careful, great 12s, because if you just go, well, therefore, and you, you flip them because you know that the actual resistance in parallel has to be flipped and it's 12 over 5 ohms and you write that and you don't show that this is now RP, they're going to mark you wrong because they're going to assume that you didn't know that 1 over RP is, they're going to assume that you thought that 1 over RP is 12 over 5 ohms, okay? So you need to write that RP is 12 over 5, which is obviously 2 comma, that's 2, so 5 goes into 24 times. So, um, sorry, remainder 2, 5 comma, yeah, 4, 2 comma 4 ohms. Okay, so that's the one way we can do it. You can do it on your calculator as well. Um, the other way, guys, is you can use your formula for um, two, um, two resistors in parallel. So I'm just going to explain to do that example for you as well. RP is equal to the product R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. That's a plus sign. So it would be 6 plus, I'm oh sorry, 6 times 4, which is 24, over 6 plus 4, which is 10, which again is 2 comma 4 ohms. So either way, it's 2 comma 4 ohms. Then it says, what will the reading on ammeter A3 be when the switch is closed? Okay, well, this should be fairly easy for you guys because you know that the current is coming in here, and this is 5 amps. It then splits. Okay, and some of the current, and we're assuming there's no loss of current, okay? So some of the current is going up through here, and some of the current is going through here. So therefore, we've got 3 amps going through here. So what is left is only 2 amps. Okay, not too difficult, eh? Hey? Right, now let's get on to a grade 12 level question. So it says, consider the following circuit when the switch is closed. Okay, when the switch is closed, voltmeter V1 reads 4 volts, voltmeter V2 reads 1.6 volts, and voltmeter V4 reads t um, 1 volt. V4. V4. I have to find V4. Oh, sorry. Voltmeter, oh, I misread that. Voltmeter V1 reads 4 volts, voltmeter V4 reads 1 volt, and voltmeter V2 reads 1.6. Okay, it says find the effective resistance of the combination of three resistors. Okay, so that's fairly easy. We're just going to add them because they're in series. So we're going to go R total is going to be 5 plus 7 plus 8. 
Okay, and that is going to give us what? 7 and 8 is 15 and 5, it's 20 ohms. So the effective resistance is 20 ohms. Then it says find the voltmeter reading on V3 when the switch is closed. Now you will notice that don't talk about internal resistance at all. There's no mention of internal resistance. So that means that there are no lost volts. What that means is that all the volts going through the circuit should equal the four volts. Okay. Another thing that is important is that they tell you that this is the reading once the switch is closed. So even if they did mention internal resistance, this here is the potential difference. It is the volts that are actually supplied to the circuit. Therefore, this four volts has to equal the sum, the one volt plus the V3 plus the V2. Okay. So we know that four volts has to equal one plus V3 plus this 1.6 volts. Okay, so do you agree that 4 volts is equal to 2 comma 6 plus V3? So therefore V3 is going to be 4 minus 2 comma 6, which is 1 comma 4 volts is V3. Okay, so V3 is 1 comma 4 volts. And actually, if you look at it, it makes sense. Have a look at this. Do you see that it takes 1 volt to get through 5 ohms? And they said it takes 1.6 volts to get through 8 ohms. Now, remember what I said to you about what the volts are? The volts are basically calculating how much, remember V, equals W over Q. It's how much work is done per unit charge. Okay, so they're saying that to get through this 8 ohm resistor, the charge has to do one point, this, the amount of energy required is 1.6 volts, like potential energy. Okay, whereas if you're getting through, going through the 5 ohm resistor, we need 1 volt. So therefore, going through 7 ohms has to be somewhere between the 1 volt and the 1.6 volt, which is 1.4 volts. Okay, so it makes sense. So this is 1 comma 4 volts and you always need to check your answer to see if it makes sense. If you suddenly got like this was 10.4 volts and obviously you're doing something wrong because the maximum you got is 4. Okay, so have a look at that. It says if the current passing through the 8 ohm resistor is 0.2 amps. Okay, 0 comma 2 amps. What will the current be passing through the 5 ohm resistor? What will the current be passing through the 5 ohm resistor? Well, basically, we can work it out because we've got Ohm's law. But let's pretend we didn't have Ohm's law. Do you agree that we know the current in a series circuit is the same the whole way through? So therefore, we can say, well, this is obviously also going to be naught comma 2 amps. Since we know Ohm's law, we can confirm it. We can go V is equal to IR. Therefore, I is equal to V over R. The V here happens to be 1 over the resistance of 5 is the current. Therefore, the current is 0, 2 amps. There you go. So it is going to be 0, 2 amps as well. Now, finally, they say a charge of 48 coulombs of charge flows through the circuit in two minutes. Calculate the current flowing. Okay, so we've got Q is equal to 48 coulombs. We've got T is two minutes, which we immediately get to multiply by 60 to convert it into seconds, which is actually the SI unit for time. So it's 120 seconds when it comes to electricity. And what do they want? They want the current. They want I. Okay, so remember what I said to you, Great Tolls. I said always, always, always when you're working through your examples from your exams, your tests, or even just studying, you should always have your formula sheets and your periodic table with you. And this is one of the reasons why, because say, for example, you get given this question and they say to you, they have given you the charge, they've given you time, they want current. And maybe you've totally forgotten that they're related whatsoever, okay? You've totally forgotten that current is a measure of the rate at which charge goes around a circuit. And therefore you've forgotten that the equation exists. Then you can go look on your formula sheet. And what you'll see on the formula sheet is Q equals I T quit. 
and or you will know from the definition i is q over t okay so therefore that is going to be 48 over 120 and to make that easy i'm just going to get my, my calculator out and go 48 divided by 120 and that is equal to two fifths which is 0 0.4 0 comma 4 and then finally it says uh, what is it? It's current, so it has to be measured in amperes. There you go. Okay, let's look at the next example. Okay, now, 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 let's have a look at this. It says, consider the circuit below. Okay, the reading on the ammeter is 2 amps. 2 amps. And the cell is marked 12 volts. The cell is marked 12 volts. Okay, so let's, before we even look at the questions, let's have a look at what's going on. We've got a 12 volt battery. This is a positive end, and this is the negative end. And the conventional current always travels from positive to negative, right? So what do we have? We go la 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 la. Oh, look, an ammeter measuring two. Then we go la 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 la. One ohm volt, oh, um, one ohm resistor with a voltmeter across it. La la la. Parallel resistors of 18 and six and then we go la 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 and then another resistor of 0 0.5 with a voltmeter across it and then we're back to the battery okay so now we've got an idea of what is looking at going on the circuit here okay? it's always a good idea to have a look at the circuit and just get an idea of exactly what's happening before we even start reading the questions so that we can make it so when we start with the first question it says determine the combined resistance of parallel set of resistors you're not going back and going where are the parallel set of resistors you know where they are you've already looked at it okay so Therefore, we can say 1 over R parallel. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use the shortcut to, no, I'm not, because it's multiplying, is equal to 1 over 18 plus 1 over 6. Okay. So, therefore, the common denominator is 18 is 1 over RP. 18 goes into 18 once, plus 6 goes in 18 three times. So, 3 times 1 is 3. So 1 over R parallel is going to be 4 over 18. Therefore, R parallel is 18 divided by 4, which is going to be 4 comma 5 ohms. So the effective resistance of this combination is 4 comma 5 ohms. Oh, sorry. So what does that mean? That means that I can actually replace this resistor, this set of resistors with a 4,5 ohm resistor. Okay, it would do the same function. Okay, now it says calculate the total resistance of the circuit. Okay, well now effectively we've got a series circuit. Do you agree? We've got the 1 ohm over there. We've got effectively a 4.5 ohm resistor over here. And then we've got effectively a 0 0.5 ohm resistor over here. So we can just add them up as they come out. So we can go R total is 1 plus 4,5 plus 0,5, which is going to be 6 ohms. So that's a 6 ohm resistor. 6 ohms. Okay. Now it says calculate the current flowing through the 18 ohm resistor. It says calculate the current flowing through the 18 ohm resistor. Okay, so what you need to understand is that the two amps, because it's split, right, remember? So the current is coming down here, la, 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 comes through here, goes through there, and now it splits. And remember, it has to split on what I call a reverse pro rata rate, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, okay? So the current comes in, and then there is the 18 ohm resistor, and there is a 6 ohm resistor, okay? read. Now, normally if we knew the volts across here, we could just go V equals IR, but we don't, so we need to think about this. We know that we've got two amps coming in here, and now they split. So this is a ratio, do you agree, of three to one, okay? So grade 12, let me just explain the ratio thing again to you. If I said to you, I have a cake, there's the top of the cake, and I say to you, I want you to break it up so that 
one person gets three times as much as another person. So one person gets three times as much as another person. How would you do it? Okay. Do you agree that the best way would be to divide this cake into four bits? Okay. And then give one of the people three quarters of the cake and you just take one quarter or whatever the case may be. Okay, so what I'm saying is that when we're trying to divide things up in a ratio of three to one, we actually have to look at the total number parts and the total number parts is four. So therefore we can say, well, one part of this current is actually two divided by four, okay, which is 0, 0,5 amps. Okay, so what you need to understand now is that this is a ratio of three to one, which means the current is going to be split opposite. It's going to be split that one out of the court, one out of the four is going to go up here. So one quarter of the two amps is going to go up here and three quarters of the two amps is going to go down here. Okay, so in that case, we can work out what's one quarter of two amps, which I've already done, but I'm just going to rewrite it. So one quarter of two amps is going to be one quarter times by two, which is 0, 0,5. So the correct answer is what is the current flowing through the 18 ohm resistor is 0, 0,5 amps. So if that's 0, 0,5, then we can obviously see since we had two amps that this down here is going to be 1, 0, 0,5 amps. amps. Okay, now it says if the reading on V1 is 1 volt, 1 volt, then what would you expect the reading on V2 to be? Okay, right, so again, we're just looking at ratios and we're using our, we can actually use Okay, we don't even have to use Ohm's law. We can just look at the ratios. Do you agree it takes one volt to get through 0.5 ohms? Okay, it takes one volt to get through 0.5 ohms. Okay, now how many volts do you think it's going to take to get through one ohm? Obviously, it's going to be double that. So it's going to be two volts. There you go. And that is why they didn't ask you to calculate it. They didn't ask you to work, prove something. They just said, what would you expect? Which means that you should be able to work it out pro rata like that. Okay, a nice, decent grade 12 type of question. Let's get going. It says, in the circuit below, the battery has an EMF, and there's the first time you're seeing EMF, of 12 volts and an internal resistance of R. Three resistors, one, two, three, are connected as shown. So let's go through it again. Positive, there's a split over here. There's a random resistor. Oh, three resistors in a bulb. Okay, so this is a light bulb. Okay, so there we go. They go through. There's a switch over there. This is two ohms, by the way. Comes back together. There's six ohms and it comes back. S1 moving back down to here. Okay, fine, fair enough. Now it says the resistance of the bulb is two ohms, pointed that out. Initially, both switch S1 and S2 are open. So is any current going? Let's have a look. La, 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 la. No, it's not. Okay, there's no current going. It's assume that all the connecting wires are emitted as negligible resistance. With only switch, now we only close switch one. Okay. It says the reading on the voltmeter drops to 10.8 volts. Okay, so now it's measuring 10.8 volts, 10,8. Okay, but let's just have a look at our circuit. It goes la, 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 through there, through there, and back through there. So now we've got a series circuit happening. Do you agree? It's not going through the S2. There it is going, okay? It says calculate the reading on the ammeter. Well, we've got V is equal to IR. Okay, do you agree? But the only resistance, this 10.8 is the potential difference, agreed? If it's a potential difference, which, because that's what's actually being supplied to the circuit, um, we don't have to worry about the internal resistance of this taken into effect, okay? It's already been taken into effect by the fact that we're looking using the potential difference, okay? So now, with total resistance in the circuit is 6 plus 6, which is 12 ohms. So we know that the voltage is 10,8. 
we want the current and the total resistance is 12. So therefore, do you agree the current is going to be 10 comma 8 divided by 12, which equals what? Okay, let's have a look. We've got 10.8 divided by 12, which equals 9 tenths, which is 0, 0,9. So that's 0, 0,9 amps. So that would be 0, 0,9 amps with the red circuit. Okay, now they want to know us is the internal resistance of the battery. Okay, well, think about it. The formula that you get given is that the EMF equals V plus, okay, V external, plus V last, okay? But we know the V last, we can work it out. Well, we can work out what the V last is, which is going to be 12 is equal to 10 comma 8 plus the V last. So do you agree the V last is equal to 1 comma 2 volts? But what is the V last? V last is made up of the current times by the internal resistance. And we've just worked out what the current is, is 0.9. So we can say 1.2 is equal to 0, 0,9 little r. So we can divide both of these by 0, 0,9. And therefore r is going to be what? So 1.2 divided by 0, 0.9 which equals 1 comma 333. So the internal resistance in this case is going to be, remember, we'll always round off to two decimal places. So it's going to be 1 comma 33 ohms. So the internal resistance is 1 comma 33 ohms. Okay, now we've got a new situation. So now we're going to just erase, okay, wait, do we need to? Okay, let's erase all the ink, okay. And now we've got the whole circuit is working, okay? So this is closed and this is closed. The whole circuit is working. And they say to you that with this S1 and O to close, the ammeter reading is now 1,5 amps. 1,5 amps, okay? Now it says calculate the power dissipated by the bulb. Okay, power, 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 power. So if you go look at your formula sheet, okay, you should get a bunch of equations that will help you work out your power. Power is equal to W over delta T, which is equal to VI, which is equal to I squared R, which is equal to V squared over R. Those are all the formulae that you get given on the formula sheet with respect to power. Okay, now let's think about this. Do we have work? No. And time? No. Do we have the volts across the two ohm resistor, across the bulb? No. So we can't use the volts, and we can't use volts, so obviously we're using I squared R. So we're going P is equal to I squared R. The current that is going through this, now that is the tricky one, because they want you to work out Okay, just let me show you something. We have to work out what the current is going through this, okay? Because if you look at this, the current goes yeah, and then it splits. La 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 and then it goes through and it becomes 1.5 amps. So it is splitting, okay? So do you see that it's splitting on a ratio of six? to five. Oh, this blue really doesn't work on this background. It's too dark blue. Six to five. Okay, so how many parts are there in total? There are 11 parts. Okay, so therefore we can say that six out of the 11 parts are going to go through this bit and five out of the 11 parts are going to go through this bit. Agreed? Okay, um, I'm wondering if there's an easier way of doing this. There is, but let's do this pair and then I'll show you the other way. Okay, well, not easier, just a different way. So do you agree that this current is going to be 6 out of 11 parts of, 6 out of 11 parts of um, the 1.5 amps? So we're going to work that out. We're going to go 6 divided by 11 
multiplied by 1.5 equals 9 over 11, which is 0,82. So the current is 0,82 squared multiplied by this resistance of 2. So if we have a look at that, it becomes squared. I'm just going to square this one equals and then multiply it by 2 equals and then press the SD button and that becomes 1.34. So the power is 1,34. Now I always like to say the silly joke, what is power measured in? Power is measured in watts. Power is measured in watts. Okay, so therefore this is watts. Okay, the other way that you could have done this, it's also doable, it's a little bit more tedious and irritating, but you can have done, could have done it. Well, not necessarily, it depends on what you're thinking. So let me show you. Okay, do you agree that the volts across a parallel conductor are equal? Okay, so we can therefore say, well, we know that the current going through all of this is 1.5 amps, okay? The volts, okay, um, so the current going through this is one point, yeah. Hmm. Okay, there is another way of doing it, which means we could have worked out the voltage here, and then, no, but we didn't know that. Okay, no, that is the best way. That is really the best way of getting that. Okay, now it says, what effect will the closing of both switches have on the last volts? Okay, so this is quite an interesting effect, okay, because it says increase, then it says right only increase remains the same and decrease, and then of course they say fully explain your answer. Okay, do you agree that by closing the second switch, what has happened? We've actually increased the current. We've actually increased the current, okay. So by doing that, what have we done? Okay, by increasing the current, we're increasing the rate at which the electrons are going to go through. Okay, so I could explain this using the equation, but I'm rather going to explain it using logic. The greater the rate at which the electrons are going through, the more friction there will be, and therefore there will be a greater internal resistance, and therefore it will increase the amount of lost volts. The amount of lost volts. Okay, so an increase in the current, strangely enough, increases the amount of lost volts for the simple reason that it increases the internal resistance because the electrons are moving faster and therefore we increase the lost volts. Okay, now let's look at this question. It says a battery of unknown EMF, there's your battery of unknown EMF, and an internal resistor of 0.5 ohms is connected to three resistors. One, two, three. Okay. A high resistance voltmeter and an ammeter as shown below. Okay. So again, what I'd like to do is have a look at exactly what's going on. So here's your battery. And do you agree that that effectively is my basic circuit? Okay. Then we've got in parallel, we've got a two ohm resistor. Okay. And then in parallel to that, we've got a voltmeter. Okay, so the voltmeter is not only parallel to the two ohm resistor, but it's parallel to the both resistors. Yeah. So if I wanted to, I could redraw this like this. And sometimes it's easier if we redraw these things. So, okay, no, hang on. Let me just fix this. Um, I'm not going to make, do, make you much changes, but just to help you think about this, here's your ammeter. Okay, here is the 4 ohm resistor, and here is the 8 ohm resistor. Okay, there over here. Parallel to all of these, I know that this is drawn in a straight line, which I find some students struggle with. So parallel to all of these is a 2 ohm resistor, okay? And then this voltmeter is placed in parallel with this, but we could actually put the voltmeter across here if we wanted to. Do you see that the voltmeter is parallel to both the, or well, to all three? It's parallel to the 
power source, your battery, it is parallel to the ammeter and these resistors, and it's parallel to this two ohm resistor. So do you agree that the volts going through this branch here, this top branch, should equal the volts going through this branch because they are parallel? Then it tells you the reading on the ammeter is 0, 2 amps. Okay, so that means that we can actually work out what the reading on the voltmeter is. Okay, how can I do that? Well, we know that Ohm's law says V is equal to I R. We can work out the resistance in this branch here, okay, which is again because they are in series, it's 4 plus 8 is 12. So therefore I can say V is equal to 0, 2 multiplied by 12, um, which is going to be, just to prove it to you, 0 0.2 multiplied by 12 is get 2.4, is going to be 2.4 volts. So the reading on this voltmeter is 2,4 volts, or up here, 2,4 volts. Okay, now it says the total current supplied by the battery. Okay, so again, we have to look at the two ways you can do this, okay, you can, and I'm going to show you both ways. You can either look at how the current is split across the resistors, or you can apply Ohm's law, okay. If we look at Ohm's law, and we just look at this lot here, so we're looking just at this bottom half, okay, or if you want to, we're looking just at this big top half. We know the volts are 2.4, and we know the resistance is 2, so we can work out this current, okay? And then it says they want the total current, so then we'll add it to 0 0.2 amps that we've already been given, and then we can just work out the total current because of that. So, let's do that. We've got V is equal to IR. The V is 2.4, because it's the same across both, right? So that's 2,4 is equal to I multiplied by 2, because the resistance is 2 ohms. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. So you get I is 1,2 amps. So the ammeter, if there was an ammeter here, it would say 1,2. Or if you want to think of it this way, if there's an ammeter here, it would say 1,2. And then you obviously just add them. You add the 1,2 and the 0,2, so the total I, I dot, is going to be 1,2 plus 0,2, which is 1,4 amps. Okay, that's fine, but I do want to show you how to do it the other way, just to make sure you understand it. Okay, so do you agree that the current going here is going through a 12 ohm resistor, right? So this is 12. The current going through here is going through a 2 ohm resistor. So do you agree that it's if I split it up, okay, this would be 12 and this would be 2. Okay, so then the current we're going through here is 0, 2. So how many parts do we have? Do you agree that, okay, we could divide both of these by 2 to make it easier. So this would be 6 and this would be 1. Okay, so do you agree with 7 parts? Okay, so what we're saying is 6 out of the 7, no, 1 out of the 7 parts equals 0, 2. Okay. 1 out of the 7 parts equals 0, 2. So do you agree that the total number of parts is going to be 7 multiplied by 0, 0.2, which is 1, 4. So the total number of parts that is going through here, because 6 is 27, so 1 seventh of it, okay, 1 seventh of it equals 0, 0.2. So therefore, the total number of parts is 1.4, and 1.4 minus 0, 0.2 is going to be 1, 2. So that's how you know what that is. Or you could have just said, well, if that's 1 seventh is 0, 0.2, then 7 times 0, 0.2 is 1.4, and that is the total current going through. You wouldn't even have to have written that that's 1.2. I don't mind how you guys do it as long as you get it right and you understand what you're doing. Okay, let's look at the EMF of the battery. The EMF of the battery is what? So we've got the total resistance of the circuit. 
um have we got the total resistance so not yet um but we've okay so let's see what we've got we've got the total current total current going through the circuit is one comma four um we have got the voltmeter reading the external voltmeter reading is two comma four are we doing anything else and we want the emf okay so the emf is equal to v plus I little r, okay? We know the big V is 2,4 plus the current is 1,4 multiplied by this internal resistance of 0,5 and that's going to give us that EME, EMF. EME. So let's get our calculator out and we're going to say 1.4 multiplied by 0.5 equals 7 tenths plus 2.4 equals 3.1. So the EMF is 3,1 volts. Okay, final question. It says, how would the voltmeter reading change? How would this voltmeter reading change if the 2 ohm resistor is removed from the circuit? Write down only increase, decrease, or remain the same. How would the voltmeter reading change if the 2 ohm resistor was removed from the circuit? In other words, what they're saying is if this isn't here, how would the voltmeter reading change? Well, do you agree that the voltmeter measures? Okay, so now the total resistance, mm, it's kind of tricky because the resistance in the circuit has now gone up. Okay, the resistance in the circuit has now gone up. It's gone, the total resistance has gone up because of the fact that there was a parallel part and now there's not. Okay, which means that it's going to require more effort to get through, so the voltmeter reading is going to increase. And the reason would be because of the fact that this 2 ohm resistor was actually providing an alternate route. So it's making it, it's by removing the 2 ohm resistor, we're increasing the overall resistance of the circuit, which means it's going to require more energy to get through and therefore it is going to increase the voltage. There you go. Right, grade 12, that's it for today. Um, I hope you have a great evening and please join me tomorrow when we'll continue with physics. Have a great day. Great night.